In today's video, we're going to go through a budget lighting setup that you can use for corporate headshot photography. Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. So today's video is going to be one that you guys have been asking me to do for a while now, and that is uh, to show you a budget lighting setup that you can use for corporate headshots. Um, now, corporate headshots, it probably makes up about 80% of the work that I do. So I've got several lighting setups that I use depending on the situation. And uh, typically, well, most of the time I have one that's permanently set up, but sometimes uh, I need to go to my client's premises and uh, specifically when I need to travel very light, if it's just myself, then I'm going to show you that setup today. So not only is it a budget setup, but I use this because it's just easy to, tr to, to transport as well when you need to go to the com uh, customer sites. So I don't want you to think that this is something I, that I put together for this video. This is something that I use on a regular basis. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give you a brief description of what's going on, and then we'll go into details as to every piece of equipment that we've got here. Okay, so let's have a quick summary of what we've got going on here and then we'll deep dive into each one of the pieces. First of all, we've got our light here. So for this setup, I'm only gonna be using one light. Uh, this is just a speed light with an umbrella. And then because we're only using one light, I need something to potentially fill the shadows if I get any harsh shadows. So I've got a reflector going on here. And then I've got my backdrop over there. That's just a C-stand with a paper roll. And then I've got my camera here uh, typically I'd be a little bit further back, but then you wouldn't be able to see it in the video. So a little bit further back and my subject is going to be somewhere around here. I want to leave as much space as I can between the subject and the backdrop because I don't want any harsh or any funky uh, shadows showing up on the backdrop. Um, sometimes, depending on the environment, I may add a second light. Now in this environment here, it's quite bright. So there's a lot of ambient light, but if I was shooting in a darker environment, what I would also have is another one of these. So exactly the same setup as I've got here, but I would have it at the back of the room. Typically somewhere between one or two meters, what's that, six to 12 feet behind me. So wherever it is that I'm shooting from, my shooting position, I would have that behind me, a couple of meters behind, and a little bit higher than this and it would just be pointed directly at the backdrop okay the idea behind a second light is to just fill the room with a little bit of more light okay so that you don't have uh, it reduces the contrast uh, on on the skin so that is pretty much the overall uh, scenario that we've got going on in here so now let's have a look at each individual piece and uh, we'll do a little bit of more of a deep dive on each one of those okay so i moved the camera over there to give you a better view of what's going on so like I said before, I'm only gonna be using one light for this setup. So let me show you what's going on in here. Obviously we've got a light stand and we've got a speed light that's shooting through an umbrella. So this is a shoot through umbrella. Um, I've also got a trigger in here so that I can fire off the flash remotely from my camera. And then I've got a bracket in here. One of the important things to remember here is that when you are looking to buy a flash or a speed light, make sure that you get something that is not super expensive. You only need the most basic of speed lights. Now I've got some links in the description that I'm gonna put in there for you uh, to some of the ones that I use. These are completely, there's no smarts about any of these flashes here and you don't want any smarts, that's the key to it. One of the things that you'll notice when you go from a hobbyist or an amateur photographer into a paid job or a commercial environment is that you have to shoot manual pretty much all the time, not only in your camera, but also in your lights. So you don't want things like ETTL or anything like that uh, for this type of shoot. You want full manual control because when you go to your editing and you're gonna have a lot of images to edit, what you wanna do is you want to edit the first photograph, set all your global adjustments, such as exposure, contrast, things like that, and then you want want to apply all of those to the rest of your photographs. If you don't do that and you let the camera or the lights shoot at automatic uh, settings, then you're going to get different types or different exposures, different levels. And that means that you're gonna to have to edit each photo individually, which you don't want to do. So um, I will put a link to these ones here. I think these are uh, Yong Nuo 
I think that's how you pronounce them. And uh, they're fairly inexpensive, so you can get a few of these and it's really not gonna be that expensive. Uh, so that is the flash that I use. I also use the Fotix uh, triggers. To me, these, these have been like absolutely bulletproof and I've had them for nearly 10 years and they're, they're still working perfectly well. And um, so they're the triggers that I use and they've got a mounting, um, they've got a mount in there that you can just mount the flash on. And that's why I like those ones. That is then connected to a, um, an arm here. So this is, these arms are specifically designed to be able to mount speed lights. And then the other thing that I do is I make sure that I swivel the head of the flash so that it's pointed directly at the middle of the umbrella. Um, you want to flood this umbrella with as much light as possible. And there is a setting in all speed lights that allow you to zoom in and out. And basically what that means is that you're going to, uh, you're going to focus the light in when you zoom in. And if you zoom out to something like say, these ones go up to 24 or go down to 24 millimeters, it means that the light um, spreads out. Uh, think of it as a 24 millimeter lens where you can see a wide angle. So you, you see a lot more. That's what the light, uh, the same behavior for the light. So you want that pointed directly at the center and um, and then you've got to position this light. So where I'm going to position this is roughly, let me just bring that back up to there. And so if I am standing roughly over here, I would have that light there, maybe a little bit lower than that in fact. So I would probably have it, in fact, a little bit lower even then. Maybe around there and we're going to shoot some we're going to take some shots later on so that i can show you uh what these look like okay so um um so there we've got that light ready to go and uh so that's fine and one of the things that a lot of people ask me is that how close should you have the light to your subject you should have it as close as possible even if it gets in the frame. So if you can see the light in the frame, that is completely okay. What, what you don't want to happen is that you don't want the, uh, the light to be uh, crossing over or touching you in the frame itself. Uh, what I mean by that is that I wanna be able to see backdrop all around my subject. So if, if I can see the light there, that's fine. But when it, when it crosses either behind me or in front of me, that's no good. So you want to get it as close as you can, but you don't want it to cut in front of you or behind you, okay? Uh, because you can always you can always cut it out, and uh, there's a way to edit photographs like uh, when you're taking with a, a setup like this one. And if you want me to show you how to do that, just let me know in the comment section, and I'll make a video about that. So that is the light, and roughly, so from where you're standing there, um, this is probably where I would have my light, okay? Like I said, we're going to take some shots. Uh, it'll have to be me because I don't have a subject, but I'll get in front of the camera and I'll show you what it looks like. So we've got the light over here. Now, one of the things that we're going to have is because I've got so much light coming through this way, um, this side is going to be in shadow, okay? And although you want shadows, you don't want your shadows to be too uh, too defined, okay? You know, that's, that's the ratio, that's the contrast. You don't want too much brightness on one side and too much darkness on the other side. So what you do is you can either reduce the, 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 the light from this side or you can increase the light from this side, okay? So we, wanna, we want one side to have a little bit more light but not too much of a difference. So for that, we're gonna be using this. This is a reflector. Now you can use whatever reflector you want. I like these because these are on a frame and then I just put them on one of these knuckles, okay? Let me show you this. These knuckles just undo and uh, what you can do is that you can move this up and down this way, okay? And you can move it this way, all right? And then it's just really easy to lock it and it just stays in place. It's just, so you can get those collapsible ones as well and they make arms for those. But I just find these uh, just really sturdy. They don't fall down and then you can just move them around. Uh, there is, uh, with these particular ones, this is, actually, this is actually called a flag. It's not, it, it, you can use it for, as a reflector, but it's actually called a flag. And what you have is these covers, um, it's like a sock, okay? So you can slide this off and on the inside, you've got a golden side and a white side as well. And then on this side, you've got a silver side. And then here, if you can see that, you've got a black side as well. The black side is used to reduce uh, the light bounce even more. But if, for this case, because we've only got one light, I want to get as much bounce as I can from this side. I'm just going to use the silver side 
because that's got the most bounce. So for this type of setup, what I would do is I would have this again as close to me as I can so that even if it shows up in the photo, it's still okay. Uh, but I, again, I don't want it cutting into me, okay? Just like the light. So this would be the setup that I would use. Now, one of the things to remember with this one here, don't, most people bring it back level. So let me turn around this way. If the camera was over there, they bring it around about there to, to fill it back in, bring it forward a little bit, okay? So that's gonna give you more light across your face. This way it'll just light sort of this side and it won't fade off. So bring it forward a little bit. Okay, so for this case, I wanna get it as close to me as I can and probably about there. So I'll shoot some shots here and, uh, and I'll show you what that looks like and uh, so you can get an idea of what, what results you get with this. Okay, so hopefully that's giving you an idea of the type of shot that you can get using a setup like this one. The only other thing that I will add is that um, in this room here, there's a lot of ambient light. I've got a window over here. I've got a massive window uh, over there. So there's a lot of light bouncing around. But if I'm shooting in a much darker place, then the only other addition that I would make is I would have another lighting setup just like this one. So an umbrella, a light, light stand and I would place another light behind me. So wherever I'm shooting from, okay? So wherever ca the camera is, I would have the light uh, approximately one to two meters behind me and put it straight at the backdrop. And what that's gonna do is just gonna provide a lot of just overall light into the room and it's gonna reduce the contrast, which is gonna make things uh, look a little nicer. And it's just gonna give things a lift, but that's an, only an optional thing. But regardless of whether I use it or not, I always have that with me just in case. Not only does it let me shoot, or like I said, bring up the ambient uh, light off the, off the room, but if I've got a failure here, something happens with this light, I can very quickly just grab another light, set it up, and, and it's ready to go. So you should think about um, having some sort of redundancy in your gear when you're working with paid shoots. So that's it, I hope you found this video useful. If you did and you'd like to support me, please don't forget to click the like button. It makes a huge difference to me and to the channel. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider doing so. I make videos like this to help you with your photography on a weekly basis. So if you don't wanna miss out on any of those, click the subscribe button and the notification bell and that way you'll be notified when I upload a new video. If you have any questions, please make sure that you leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, you can reach me through any of the usual social media platforms and you're going to find all the links to those in the description below. And don't forget about ministryofphoto.com. That's my website where you're going to find a lot of tutorials. There's some extra bits and pieces that I don't show in here. And uh, you'll also find things such as uh, reviews and some downloads and freebies uh, such as Lightroom presets. Uh, that you can get it's completely free so make sure you check it out that's ministryofphoto.com again i hope you enjoyed this video i want to thank you for watching and i'll see you next time Go.